133 uh, pounds, Austin DeSanto, Nick Seriano. The meet everybody's been talking about. Yeah, you know, it's going to be difficult for uh, DeSanto to get what he likes to have. He likes to have that left arm of Soriano tied up. If he can control that, control the head, he's got a real good chance of staying in this match. And Shane mentioned in the open, Soriano, you know, what does he need to do? I, I think Soriano is one of the top five guys in, in attacking the legs, but, it, uh, you know, if he can get to your knees, he can finish above to the hips as well as anybody in the country. He's a really good finisher in that position. But the problem has been for him to get to that leg. He hasn't got the attacks off. Nick Seriano started at Penn State. He was 16 and three as a freshman. Transferred to, to Rutgers. 14 and one, ranked third in the Flow Wrestling National Rankings. DeSanto loves to have that tie up there, again, with his right arm, trying to get inside control. But you can see every time that he reaches with that arm, all right, Soriano's doing something to counter or neutralize that. You know, for 33-pounder, Soriano wrestles pretty high. And I think that was part of the frustration wrestling Dayton Fix last week is that these guys have such tough styles. There wasn't much scoring, much many attacks in that match. There's the Flow National Rankings going across the bottom of the screen. You'll see them in every match. Flow Wrestling, our partner in National Rankings. Austin DeSanto, in a black and gold here, a sophomore, a transfer from Drexel, Exeter High School. He was a state champion in Pennsylvania. Actually beat Spencer Lee. Their senior year, Go keeping face. Spencer from up, being a four-time state Get champion in Pennsylvania. And now, Single they're existing well side. together as yes. a one-two punch for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, and according to Tom Brand, Spencer had a lot to do with bringing DeSanto into the room. And hey, you talk about this guy, he's been high-octane in the room, too, as well. I mean, he's got, he's got a good gas tank. And the longer this match goes with not much scoring here, it's low scoring going into the later periods. That's an advantage for DeSanto. Nick Seriano, Rutgers' first national finalist and the highest finisher in the program history. A four-time state champion in Bergen Catholic High School, 159-0 in high school. Yeah, a lot of reaching there at this point in time here by DeSanto. He's kind of keeping them measured out there, working the head. Both the guys like to do that. There's the first shot of the match. Again, but as he comes back up, he's got DeSanto. DeSanto was in a favored position there, and he didn't attack. There's the attack. This is the type of action that you'd like to see, both coaches would like to see in the first minute of the match. Well, you mentioned the advantage to DeSanto keeping it close in the first period because the key to Seriano are early takedowns. Well, there's a double stall call. Yeah, double stall call, so that's bringing one out of the closet. Push to one! Yes, on Yes! Don't see that much anymore. We're going to end the first period with no score here at 133 pounds. We'll go to the second period. Seriano is the cho choice, and he chooses down to begin the second period. A good look at Nick Seriano. Had a big Cliff Keen Invitational win this year already, first place, and been wrestling really well. And I think he looks great at this weight class. He got a chance to lay some hands on him here. It's an introduction, and he gets up with a quick escape. That's really important. But look for him to go ahead and, and, and change elevations a little bit. There you go. Welcome to those who have been watching Northwestern versus Rutgers men's basketball. We're at 133-pound match, the highly anticipated match where Nick Seriano and Austin DeSanto was 0-0 after the first period, but Seriano with an escape and a takedown. I'm Tim Johnson along with Jim Gibbons. Iowa out in front 6-0 after the first period pin by Spencer Lee, the NCAA champion for the Hawkeyes, getting them off to a fast start. Here we are at 133 pounds in the second period. Nick Seriano out in front of Austin DeSanto, 3-0. Yes, double stall warning in the first period. Not much action in the first two minutes, Tim, and then you know, both guys kind of got after it, and then there was a quick stall, double stall call at the end of the first period, and then quick escape by Suriano. He answered it with a changing levels and gets into a nice single leg finish here to go up 3-0.
That's what this, uh, Suriano does so well is he moves laterally, lowers his level, and uh, nice takedown there, but both these guys go high pass, pace. Yeah, they do, and, and, and this is this is really a test. I mean, Suriano's the young man who's had a lot of success in his career to this point. Of course, DeSanto, just a sophomore. Scott Goodale there, the head coach for Rutgers in his 12th season, doing a great job of making Rutgers relevant in the Big Ten. Boy, that's no doubt about that. Great job by DeSanto staying square right there. And now a little underarm spin. DeSanto's got to be careful, but this is the type of action, if he can go ahead and stay neutral, he'll find himself in this match. Breeding activity. You can see that uh, Soriano did a nice job technically to getting to his single leg finish and build up a little bit of riding time, 29 seconds. Two laser-focused wrestlers right there with a high pace and a passion for the sport. Well, right now it's slowed down a little bit in short time with about the last 10 seconds left, but nothing clean. Let's look again at our lineup brought to you by Defense Soap. Defend what you have built on the web at defensesoap.com. That's Spencer Lee got the pin in the first period. You're looking at Siriano and DeSanto. Lapari and Marin, Murin going next. Ashnall, the three-time All-American versus Lugo. Van Brill versus Young. And then all the way down to the heavyweights between Colucci and Costello. Yeah, Iowa really favored in a lot of the upper weight matches. So Rutgers is such an important match for them. You know, good work there by DeSanto. Good mat return on the single leg, switching off to a double, and that's important because that allows him to go ahead and kind of move up, and he's got another stall call, which has one point. Remember, there was a double stall call late in the first period, and Suriano's inability to kind of move up on the man, all right, cost him one point. But nine seconds, you got to stay on top. You can't take the ref referee, can't take you out of your strategy here. Well, that was important for DeSanto. That's exactly what Coach Goodale and Donnie Pritzlov uh, caution. We're talking to Seriano from the edge of the mat. Get your riding time, stay focused, and that's the second caution on the top man. Seriano, the third, will cost him a point. A little elevator there, attempt there by DeSanto coming into a quad pod stand up, short time. Uh, as far as riding time is concerned, Probably want to, oh, there's another stall call, so that negates any riding time points you're going to get if you get it. The referee calls a stalemate right there from the feet, so those are two stalling calls, and that's where you get into trouble, I think, a little bit with that double stall call. I think there's a communication issue right here because uh, the, the, the coaches are telling Seriana, you got to let him go now. It's three to three. And that's, that's one thing about an environment like this. Coaching guys, I've been in this situation coaching some of the best against some of the great Iowa teams, and you know, you just lose sometimes, just lose communication with your guy out there. Now, you got a guy coming hard, and the referee's already given up two stall points pretty freely. You got to go out there for Suriano. If you're Suriano, you got to try to score. It's four to three on the scoreboard, but it's four to four with riding time right now in the favor of Suriano. But he wasn't going to stay on top anymore because the official was calling him for stalling. Look for Suriano to a lot of head fakes here, get a little bit of motion, and get DeSanto reaching into him. Right there, he got what he wanted. This is an advantage situation for DeSanto, but Suriano so strong. I think he looks great at this weight class, Tim. 133, moving up from 25. See if he can navigate the storm. this. See, DeSanto. Desan Part partisan uh, crowd here at Carver Hawkeye. Desanto has to go ahead and do something just besides tie up, though. Where are your attacks? There's the go-behinds. There's the action call. So short time, 23 seconds left here. No backward steps for anybody, I don't think. Place is going crazy. If it ends like this in the third period, we'll go to overtime because the riding time in favor of Suriano is effectively a tie match right now. Suriano can't back up. He can't back up, but... Santos got has really got to follow it up with a technique. There it is, right there. He's got an opportunity. Not much time. He, and got he gets it. the takedown at the buzzer. Well, so obviously a loss of mat control situation where you've got 
Coach Brand stepping out of the mat, telling his athlete to stay cool. Showing some respect there at the end for a hard fought match. Big win for Austin DeSanto. Here's the takedown. You mentioned he had to go ahead and follow it up with a shot. There's six seconds left at this point in the match. He's going ahead, gets his head all the way through. He dumps him on his rear, and there's no ridges there. And you're watching Big Ten Wrestling, sponsored by Cliff Keen Athletic.